Once upon a time, in a cozy village near a big forest, there lived a sweet little girl named Lily. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because of the bright red cloak she always wore. Lily, your grandmother is feeling sick. Can you take this basket of goodies to her? Remember, stay on the path and be careful of the big bad wolf. Yes, Mom. I'll be careful. Setting off with a cheerful wave to her mother, Little Red tightened the ribbons of her iconic cloak and adjusted her basket under her arm. She knew her grandmother's small yellow house was on the other side of the woods, and she needed to hurry to reach it before nightfall. Little Red Riding Hood set off into the forest with the basket in hand. The sun was shining, and the birds were singing. As she walked deeper into the woods, her heart was filled with excitement as she spotted the colorful array of wild flowers along the forest path. She couldn't resist the urge to gather a few for her beloved grandmother. Oh, what pretty flowers. I'm sure Grandma would love these. I'll just pick a few. As Little Red picked the flowers, the flowers smelled so sweet, sweeter than peppermint candy. Then Red Riding Hood heard a gruff voice say, Yes, they certainly are beautiful flowers. She turned and saw the big, greedy wolf of the forest standing on top of a rock. Red Riding Hood had never seen a wolf before, so she was not afraid. She thought he was the biggest and most beautiful brown dog. Hello there, little girl. Those are lovely flowers. What are you doing all alone in the forest? My grandma is not feeling well, so I am going to visit my her with some fresh cookies and a bouquet of flowers. Where does your grandmother live? She lives in a small yellow house with a red roof just over the hill. Oh, I see. You know, I think I know a quicker way to your grandma's house. Why don't you take the path through the sunflower field? The wolf, with a mischievous grin, hurried off towards grandma's house. Little Red Riding Hood was not in a hurry, and there were many things to amuse her in the wood. She ran after the white and yellow butterflies that danced before her, and sometimes she caught one, but she always let it go again, for she never liked to hurt any creature. On her way to her grandma's house, she saw a woodman in the forest. While Little Red Riding Hood was walking towards the grandma's house, the cunning wolf galloped on as fast as he could to the old woman's house. The wolf arrived at grandma's house and knocked on the door. She lived in the house all by herself. Who is there? Little Red Riding Hood, Granny, said the wolf trying to speak like the child. When Grandma opened the door, the wolf swallowed her whole. Then, he put on her nightgown and cap and snuggled into her bed, waiting for Little Red. When Red Riding Hood arrived at her grandmother's house, she knocked at the door, but there was no answer. She knocked again, and a strange, gruff voice said, lift the latch and come in. It was strange, but the bright sunshine of the forest made grandmother's room appear very dark to see through, making it difficult for her to see her grandmother clearly. Something seemed off about her grandmother's appearance. Her features looked uncharacteristically altered, and her voice had a deep, gruff quality that was quite unlike her usual warm, gentle tone. Red assumed her grandmother might be suffering from a severe cold with no one to look after. Oh, grandmother, how you have changed. What big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear. Oh, Grandma, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my child. Oh, but Grandmother, your nose, what a long nose you have. Oh, Grandma, what big teeth you have. All the better to eat you with. The wolf leaped out of bed, ready to devour Little Red. Just then, a brave woodsman who had been chopping wood nearby heard the commotion. He rushed into the cottage and saw the wolf attacking Little Red. The woodsman quickly axed the wolf, killing it. He cut open the wolf's belly and freed Grandma, who was still alive. Little Red hugged Grandma and the woodsman, thanking them. I'm so sorry, Grandma. I should have listened to my mom and stayed on the path. It's okay, my dear. You've learned a valuable lesson. Always be careful and don't trust strangers. From that day on, Little Red remembered to always stay on the path and never talk to strangers. And they all lived happily ever after. Thank you for spending this time with Dreamline Storytime. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. Until we meet again, keep dreaming and stay cozy. Goodbye.